All righty. Welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. What are you doing? Trying to get that to stay up. You think I can? No. I should do this before bed every night. I'd like, uh, I'd stand up like 15 coins right on their edge. And uh, I was pretty sure I had OCD at that time. But then I just like was like, wait, I don't care if they fall over, which is, I think, a main tenet of not having OCD. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. Welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is Monday. What is it? July 30th? Yeah, it's uh, the end of July, whatever the, the end fuck. of July. July 31st, um, damn near, probably, maybe. I will be in Philadelphia next weekend. Thursday through Saturday, five shows. Me. Who else? Mook. Who else? Sean Gardini. Don't just a dangerous up. trio. <laughs> That's sick. Just a danger to the stage. Yeah, two different flavors of red hair. Totally. And then I, I re-listened to my set from last year when I was there. Got a good probably 45 minutes of new material. You re-listened to your set? I listened to it from last year. Very bad. You didn't like it? Terrible. Really? I, Noticeably I, drunk. I, I mean, everybody that I was there with were like screaming laughing. Yeah, they're dumb. <laughs> I remember you left Philly last year saying that was the best you've ever done. Yeah, yeah. and it was bad. And uh, not really much better now. Um, yeah, I can't drink before going on stage anymore. Well, it's just that I mean, I was with you this weekend, and you were drinking before you went on stage. Yeah, I know, but I, you peer pressured me. You kept on buying me more drinks, and I kept on saying, "I got, I can't drink." And you were still knocking them back. I had one, but I had one after I cut myself off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's next week. The tickets are uh, in my bio on Instagram or at lilsasquatchwebsite.com. There's a meet and greet afterwards, too. No meet and greet. There's a meet and greet by City Hall. No Sass meet and gonna greet. going to be having a, a rally Yeah. by the family court. Going to be a quick do the show, go back to the hotel and sleep. What hotel are I'm you gonna staying I'm going to be on at? my best behavior. Well, I don't know. Four the, whatever the ones I stayed at last time. You got to stay at the Four Seasons. Hell no. There's like a 360 degree view of the city from the pool on the on the roof. I'm not dropping fucking ten thousand dollars on a Four Seasons hotel. You did, just, I'm not even dropping. I'm gonna bike there. I'm gonna <laughs> take a New city York? bike from New York. I'm saving as much money as I can. My rent is sneaking up on me every month, and it's a lot of money that I yeah. Don't you better have. do this comedy chop yeah. chop. So because- let's go ahead and let's go ahead and buy those tickets so I can afford to live in New York still. Uh, <laughs> getting squeezed out of the yak. Um, viciously. Dude, viciously that squeeze out is crazy Ontario and Huntsville didn't really pay well <laughs> so things aren't going the best but Philly <laughs> Philly Helium he needs this Philly Helium come to the shows uh, thank you he needs this shit badly yeah got a bunch of other shit too if you click on the website Chicago's like pretty much sold out uh, Rosemont's still available for that so, yeah, go get the tickets. Just a big reminder to the Philly people that it's a whole new hour of comedy. It's not a whole new hour, but it's well, like just lie. It doesn't 45 matter. minutes. If someone now. shows up and hears the same fucking. Also, all the jokes have changed. So who gives a fuck? And they got it's better. Good. There's no new better. tags. There's new tags. There's like two jokes that I did that are, are that I still do. How many people to come for you to take your shirt off like Burt Kreischer? Uh, 10,000. If 10,000 people fit if in that 10,000 people can show up, I'll take my shirt off. That's kind of. But I'll make sure that all their phones are bagged, (laughs) (laughs) and they're all blind people. Yeah, they have no idea. They're just feeling your nipples like braille. I know. See, everyone, dude. People were like, "Oh, what do you do? Can you not do laundry? You wear that shirt every day." Yeah, dude. It's called uh, marketing. Go birds. Go birds. (laughs) Yeah. You know? Did you see the Eagles are going to get a new color of their uniform? I did. Kelly green. Yeah. What do you think about it? You think it's a a a sexy color? Yeah, I think it's a good move for the organization. Yeah, keep people on their toes. You get people uh, buying tickets. There were people like streaming into the office, like people sprinting in to oh, buy looking tickets. Looking to get that takeoff. Yeah. No, no. Oh, oh, oh. No, but to buy into the Eagles offices or whatever, the yeah. fucking team store, I should say, trying to buy those new, uh, new yeah. jerseys. There's a, there's preseason starts this week. Our few- Packers Jets. Right? Yeah, we're going to the game. Are you really? We are, me and you. I'm not going to that shit. Why not? Where is it? Probably Jersey. Is it in Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey, like the Eagles have. It's got to be. It's going to be fucking sick and exciting to have you as a full football fan all season. Because last year you were dilly dallying a little bit, one That's foot in, one foot out. I was all in the whole season. No, by the end of the season you were full. Like it's not like you were rooting for the Eagles before they were good. No, 
But I don't root for the Eagles even now that they're good. Yes, you do. Of course I do. <laughs> Up until don't August, say that after August fourteenth, yeah. I won't. But exactly. <laughs> August thirteenth is my dad's birthday. <laughs> yeah, can he come through the show? Hell no. If he buys a ticket, he can. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, call my dad. <laughs> Chill with my dad. Is in the your green dad room. like a fucking like astrophysicist or some shit? Yeah, dude. he can buy a ticket. Your dad can swing the ticket. Do you think that astrophysicists are rich? First off, he's a biophysicist. Biophysicist. That's even more. No, it's way less. It's on a smaller <laughs> scale. Astro is the whole universe. Bio is like a little bit of yeah. tiny. Tell your dad I'll get him a ticket. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. See if I can fit him in. Because I mean, those tickets, I think since I said that, they are probably shows have sold out. And the green room is only one seat. Yeah. <laughs> we tried to chill in the green room last year and I had to like stand under a part of a roof that was slanted. Yeah. I was bent at the waist. Fuck. Shit didn't work that good. I haven't done a five, I haven't done a three day weekend in a while, and those are those are those those are brutal on the body. Five shows. Yeah. Five shows of talking. It's not even the shows. It's the it's the three nights in a hotel of like eating yeah, that's chicken fingers and slop every day and then drinking. There's healthy places that you can eat. There's a place called Hip City Veg that's like got beyond burgers and shit like that that will trick your body into thinking that you're eating meat. I'll try that out. That's really all you need to do is trick your body into thinking you're going to have some meat. Yeah. I bought some vegetarian meatballs. I'm about to cook them up tonight. Beyond Dude, meatballs. Beyond burgers aren't and I've never had the meatballs but the Beyond burgers are pretty good. You and ever had the Burger King Beyond burger? It's good. Good as fuck. Yeah, the extra slop they put on it makes it yeah, a little bit shittier. Yeah, they put a lot of extra slop on it. It's just like the, it's impossible for that sandwich to re retain its integrity for through the end of it. Yeah, it's falling apart like like wet toilet paper yeah, by the good. end. But it's delicious. It's some good slop. And for the Beyond meatballs, it's nineteen grams of protein per serving. Oh shit! So if there's like three or four servings in there, I'm getting fucking sixty grams of protein. A lot of soy though. Fuck. A lot of estrogen. Fuck, dude! I didn't realize that. That my penis is going to crawl up inside oh, yeah. me like you're a parasite. you vagina by the time you're done with those meatballs. <laughs> Fuck, dude. That sucks so bad. Whatever. I'll just I'll just join a swim team or some shit like that. Yeah, not a bad idea. Dominate. Actually, I would still suck. Imagine transitioning to like women's sports and, and, and still like, sucking. Yeah, getting like blown out of yeah. the water, like thinking that you're about to dominate. I'm sure that's happened. It probably just doesn't go. You get swept under not, the rug. Yeah. There's no outrage about it. No. Yeah, see? Yeah. Girl power. Like if I switched, if I transitioned and just started playing like women's college basketball, yeah. but like was getting swatted by these, yeah. <laughs> these women. No, probably there's probably no one on earth that's more transphobic than the girl that came in second place in that swimming meet. Why you think it destroyed her? Dude, they they made they did like an interview with her and she was like, I was working my entire life to to get this. Damn. Well, she has a new type of attention now. Yeah. You know, she's running for president of the United States. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is, yeah, she just shot two people in Kenosha. Yeah, yeah. She transitioned to a man, and she's now Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. That's the, the fucking dream. But you don't really hear shit about it. Leah Thomas was the biggest story in the fucking world. Now, one year later, it's, no one really talks about that shit at all. No. No one gives a fuck. No one actually cares about most things. I know. People really, like, you don't, no one actually cares about a large majority of things that we pretend to care about. It's just how good can the person on TV, radio, or podcast do at getting you upset about it? Getting you really angry. That's the skill of having a podcast is like, can you get the people fucking furious? Yeah. Can you foment a revolution, whip people into a frenzy? Like, this is the main thing that America is facing right now. Yeah. This is the worst thing that's facing <laughs> someone going to a brunch. Yeah. Drag brunch. Dude, Huntsville drag brunch was popping. You were there? No, we didn't go, but they were like, it sells out every single week. It's probably like entrapment. I don't know what it is, but they were like, they were like, they, they have to like bring in like extra seating and shit. Really? It's so crowded. Really? Yeah. You went? <laughs> we got invited. They were like, come on. They were like, yeah, you got to come. It's really fun. No, that was a, that was a trap. You realize what's happening here. No, dude. What did the, the feature went? My buddy Zach. Horny Batman. You might know him as. Oh really? He went yeah. to a drag brunch in Huntsville because he got kicked out of his hotel. Because he because he only had a hotel for one night because he lives in Nashville, so he was going to drive home. And how did he get kicked out? He didn't get kicked out. He checked. He had to check out. At oh, like he 11, just had to leave. And oh. he just went to the club, and the drag brunch was happening. And I thought that packed. he was like smoking meth in his room. And no, they're like, no, no. The only other place I can go right now is a drag brunch. No. Only safe space for me is to go see some folks in drag. No, dude. Horny Batman's the good guy. 
I great, know that. great comedian. Just because I said he did meth doesn't mean that I think that he sucks as a I guy. I know. It's just funny that that we that like we didn't like he came on the show. None of us knew him, and now he like has opened for me twice. Yeah, it, but like not even like like just because he works at all these clubs. Not even off the strength of the uh, barstool stuff. No, it was literally like he's a regular feature at Zany's Nashville, and Zany's Nashville owns Stand Up Live in Huntsville. I already got JFL too. No. I heard he got JVRs. No, no. <laughs> he didn't get the. You didn't get James Van Regem psych. No. Damn, that's fucking brutal for him. <laughs> yeah, but he's good. He's a good guy. He's a great guy. Um, me and you chilled this weekend. We had some yeah. fucking heart to heart time. Just me, you, and your buddy. Yeah. Who left? Yeah, your buddy bailed on us. He abandoned us. I couldn't believe it, especially after your rants about all your buddies. Yeah. That video is hilarious. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I don't really understand. I don't know. What you should say instead of my buddy. Yeah, what am I supposed to say? It just is funny when you hear someone say the same word over and over Yeah, again. I just don't like when people refer to their, like, people that not everyone knows is, like, on, like, a first name basis. I don't like that either. Yeah. Or when someone's like, our friend Marco said this. Yeah. It's like, dude, stop bragging that you got a friend. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, Jack. It's like, who the fuck is Jack? <laughs> yeah. So I just say, my buddy, Jack. Yeah, some people on podcasts will just be like, yeah, Brandon was saying this. Yeah, and then the, if there's a new it's listener, like, then they go, who the fuck is Brandon? Or they'll be like... Is that a friend? Is it your dad? They'll be like, my our friend, uh, Big Cat will say this, like our friend Rosillo or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I guess he's, he probably just does have a bunch of friends. Not all of us can be uh, fucking... Not all of us can please the listener as well as I can. <laughs> Yeah. And buddy is just a nice word. It is. Buddy is one of the most pleasing words, but I, I heard a fucking super unpleasing word. It went through, I drove through a neighborhood called Gowanus. Gowanus. Where is this? South in, Africa? In, no, in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. It's like right by downtown Brooklyn. It's like right south of downtown Gowanus Brooklyn. Gowanus definitely sounds like it would be somewhere that the safari passed through. Gowanus. Yeah. Ah, the wild snakes what, of Gowanus. What were they saying in Gowanus? What words? No, the word Gowanus is the most ugly, disgusting word I've ever heard oh, in my life. Oh, I thought you were going to say you heard like a slur. Oh, no, no, no. Slurs are music to my ears. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I hear a slur and it's like fucking Beethoven. Most definitely. Most deaf. Yeah. I look at a fucking piano. I just see black and white keys in a box. <laughs> I hear slurs. I hear Mozart. Exactly. I hear fucking Beethoven. Kind of like Beethoven, I could always just play. <laughs> when it came to slurs, I could just play. I don't know. So you think Good Google Hunting was autistic for real? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying now. But he has to be. If like autistic people are going to claim everyone that knows a state capital, they need to fucking claim Goodwill Hunting's extrapolating ass, his speed reading ass. How does speed reading even I don't think work? It's even, I think it's just as if he has a photographic memory, right? What does that mean, though? I think it means that he just is it is better at retaining information than most people. When he's when you speed read, do you read do you see every word on the page or are you picking up a general idea? I think there's like legitimate like techniques to speed reading, right? Where you pick up you just pick up like massive chunks of information per each page. And you internalize it? Are you internalizing it one thing at a time? Is I can see like Tyler first speed letter, reading. First letter, last letter, you get like your brain just picks up the, yeah, something the weird. letters in between. But have you seen like I I've seen that type of speed reading, but like what about the one where a dude just like will put his hand down a book like he's petting the back of a fucking cat and just like goes one page to the next and just like internalizes it lying yeah, yeah. that is the, <laughs> that was the ultimate move in like just middle school liar. i also thought photographic book, memory like I have, I'm, I'm a speed reader you grab a book and you flip through and you go done <laughs> and everyone's like dude there's no fucking way you just read that and you're like yeah i did no i'm genius yeah no i'm really smart i'm actually a fucking genius yeah, that was like the ultimate move as a child yeah or like uh flip books those are pretty sweet describe it's like a cartoon and you flip oh it yeah those were like awesome someone running yeah yeah that shit was fuck and then you try to do it with your own on like the bottom corner of your textbook or something like that yeah S stick figures fucking each other or something like that <laughs> the so best like, move was uh when you figured out how to like uh put the books together like intertwine them and then you couldn't pull them apart that's that's good uh physics yeah that's astrophysics. That's yeah. how you get fucking rich. Yeah. Put two books together. Mm -hmm. or, they didn't, uh, what was that? Mythbusters? Mythbusters did that. Did they? And they like couldn't get it apart. They used like two like fucking cars pulling them apart and they couldn't get it apart. I still don't understand that. Friction, bro. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mythbusters are fucking genius. Mythbusters was a good ass show. It was interesting. It was a very good show. They did the Jaws episode during Shark Week. 
they're smart bros, but also curious yeah. and like odd fellows. Very curious. I think that they might have started like the handlebar mustache train. Were they all rocking handlebar mustaches? Or like not handlebars, but like the, the curly cued <laughs> ones that are like the logos of coffee shops now. Yeah. Jeffries. <laughs> You know what really, you know what really gets me, or what really fucks me up in the head, is I think about MythBusters, but for some reason, when I picture it, I'm picturing the impractical jokers doing the MythBusters like <laughs> myths, like I'm picturing like the impractical jokers like trying to pull apart a tech like a uh, two phone books that are intertwined. Why? I don't know. That's just like what my brain goes to. I think it says they're both like filmed similar. But the one dude has like a beret. I don't remember what the MythBusters look like at all. It's like a- I'm thinking. I'm picturing Sal. It's like dudes dressed up like Steve Irwin. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why that's what my brain goes You're to. Taking a Murph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, dude. It's it's two different, two different odd cable guys. Yeah, cable white guys. It used to be fucking incredible. You could just have a, a really good group of friends and get a cable TV show. Oh yeah. That's like there was probably like twenty years of cable where they were just giving out TV shows to groups of friends. Totally. You just convince people you have a good ass group of friends. There were some good ass shows on cable, dude. De- uh, Deadliest Catch was good, but that's not what I'm thinking. Deadliest Warrior on Spike. That was awesome. That show was awesome. Jesse James versus Al Capone. That shit was awesome. They were really letting their imagination run wild with yeah. the masculine shit. Yeah, that, that was, was when real men masculine. were men. Yeah, but uh, I didn't. I never fuck with. That Shark was back when though. a male swimmer was a male swimmer. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Back when Spike TV was on. Yeah. Can we bring back Spike? Bring back Spike TV. (laughs) I want to see Leah Thomas versus Jesse James. (laughs) Weapon of choice. Revolver versus. They should do Deadliest Warrior and it's a it's a biologically women swimmer versus a (laughs) versus a trans swimmer. (laughs) And they're running like simulations. Where it's like a hundred women swimmers versus one. <laughs> Today on Deadliest Warrior. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Not to put them in different buckets. A trans trans woman is what I meant. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. I got what you meant. Of course. Just wanted to make sure that all of our trans boy dads are are represented. Yeah. And Donald Trump, if you hate trans women so much, who's gonna clean your toilets? <laughs> <laughs> You hate trans women so much. Who's going to mow your lawns? Uh, that's one of the funniest videos I've ever seen. Who's going to flip your burritos? I Mr. watched Trump. that video like a hundred times this weekend. <laughs> Who's going to win the hundred meter freestyle for, you, <laughs> for America <laughs> on the world stage? Yeah. Good shit. Let some Chinese woman beat you. What else? What else was it? It was like it was deadliest, deadliest warrior. I watched a lot. Dumb ways to die. I never watched dumb ways to die. I watched a thousand ways to die oh. or 5,000. Isn't that the same thing? 6,000 Ways to Die or some shit like that? I don't know. I, I only watched like one 10, episode of that. 10,000 Ways to Die? One, one. Okay. Yeah, that shit was cool though. They just tell stories about death. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Dude, that was like the Man versus Food era too. Yeah. It was just like that took over everything on TV. Man versus Food just ruined that guy's life. Who? Ruined his body and mind. Oh, yeah. Is he Adam still Richmond. Alive? Yeah. Silent Library that time. Yeah, was good. Good, t- good cable TV, bro. HGTV watched a lot of HGTV <laughs> Property Brothers oh, you did? oh yeah with your family? oh yeah who would uh, put that on? my mother <laughs> yeah, a lot mother, of the cooking channel mothers love that we watched a lot of Chopped we used to be a big Chopped house that was a golden era for uh, people just having like a sledgehammer and like taking down a wall oh yeah it's like oh we're gonna make this open yeah. concept they probably had cooking shows where they were doing shit like that. Chopped was great. We're there gonna, was one episode of Chopped where the the one of the people on it was I don't know if it was Chopped or if it was one of those shows like that, but the this person made it like really far through and she kept on doing like a sob story about having cancer. And then it, it then like she was like in the semifinals and she admitted that she does not have cancer and then she shaved her head <laughs> because her friend has cancer. And they kicked her off and it was so funny. That was like, but that was like, we were watching that as a family and my jaw, we were like, we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like jaw on the floor being like, how the fuck did that just happen? That's such great television. Oh yeah. The producers, as they found that oh, shit out, must yeah. have been so excited. Yeah. You know, on Barstool Idol, Francis had the thing with like, he had, can- he, he likes, found yeah, out he had cancer. He and then he had cancer. 
I don't know if it was a lie or a false positive or what. <laughs> but like I have on Monday, heard about that. it was like Monday of the competition that like, oh yeah. And he also found out he just got cancer. And then on like Thursday, as the competition was winding down, he, he like got a phone call. It was like, you don't actually have cancer. That's crazy. Francis. That's a smart move, though. I mean, you can't blame him. It's a power move. It was an incredible move. Yeah. But I don't know if... That's I, what I'm going to do. And did you guys all go to Chicago next week for the yak? <laughs> well, that's great, because I just found out that I actually have cancer. <laughs> Saz, come. Just come, You can come. Like, no, no. You would have... Yeah. If you wanted me there... Well, I got to go to known. Philly anyway. Oh, never mind. Don't have cancer. <laughs> yeah. Wait for them to invite me and then pull out. I can't go to Chicago. I have to go to chemotherapy. Yeah. I have to go get radiation. <laughs> Dude, speaking of radiation, what happened in Chernobyl? Devastating. Not RFK said it was fake. RFK is a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> RFK said all that shit was just cooked up for the dr dramatics of the series. Hell no. He's very pro nuclear energy, but super anti Wi Fi. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> nuclear bombs won't kill you. Nuclear reactors won't kill you, but Wi-Fi will, like, sleeping with your phone next to your head is what will kill you. That shit freaks me out a lot. Yeah. That's been a thing. They've been saying that forever. They've been like, you should put your phone on airplane mode and put it, like, five feet away from you while you're sleeping. No, I think I'll scroll until I fall <laughs> my asleep. My shit is, like, on top of my head when I'm sleeping. I think I'll get knocked out by <laughs> dropping it onto my yeah. forehead. And Mine's, just... like, under my cheek as I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah, just a phone imprint of an otter box on the fucking outside of your face. Dude, I, I called my mom on stage. Did I tell you about this? What? That on Friday when I was you outside. You brought her up? No, I, 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 the next morning I was going to call my, I was going to call Bo. Sorry, my buddy, Bo. No, I can't say that anymore. Can't say anything. But I was going to call Bo, my friend. That's for those who don't know, that's one of my good friends on Sunday. And I'm looking through my call history and I'm like, when did I call my mom? And I was like, I don't think I was that drunk last night at all. And then I look and it was at 944 and I got on stage at like 935. How long was the call? Yeah, it was like 10 seconds long. She was like, I just heard you talking and a bunch of people like and like talking. To, it, just, it said it sounded like you were talking to people and then she hung up. because She didn't want to eavesdrop. Oh, really? Yeah. What if it was like a 45 minute call? I know. She's like taking notes. Yeah. My house was like, what when you grew up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're who is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's fucking, I guess, a little bit mortifying. Pocket yeah. Bow. Yeah. Or, I mean, the other alternative of you being so drunk that you called your mom is funny, too. That would have been a bad one if it was, like, 3 a.m. Some people have relationships with their parents like that. Yeah, that's insane. Those are people who get hooked on hard, hard drugs. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's people... Dude, there's some people that are just really close to their parents. <laughs> Italians. Yeah, yeah, all, Italians. All Italian. Fasoli. <laughs> yeah. Mom, mom yeah. I had too many Bud Lights. <laughs> Pick me up. Yeah. We live in different states. No, they never live in different states. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're talking I'm to your mom, sleep at your place tonight. <laughs> it's one. It's one house over. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your boyfriend to fuck. Yeah. yeah. Make room on the couch. <laughs> yeah. They're always divorced too. Totally. They're always single moms to a great totally, kid. Totally. Totally. To a great fucking kid. Great fucking kid. Or people are really close to their parents when they're young, and their parents let them party at their house. That shit's always. That's the kids that end up getting hooked on drugs. Eighth grade. Yeah, my mom said we can fucking drink tonight at my place. My yeah. mom's rolling up some doobies for us. Yeah. I'd rather they do it in the house. Yeah. It's, it's you're going to be in my house. You're going to be safe. I'd rather they do the coke Three in my of the house. kids get rushed to the hospital that night. I have the, I have the best <laughs> Narcan in the house. Pumped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Getting stabbed in the chest with a needle. My mom would never let us drink at our house. My mom would never give us Narcan <laughs> if we passed out. <laughs> Even when I was in college. Really? Yeah. Well, even like until I turned twenty one, my mom would never let me and my friends drink. Who does she think she is? I don't know. I was like nineteen, and my mom was like, "I am." I, we drank at my house one time, and my mom was like, "I am not happy with this." Really? Yeah. She was like, "This is making me very uncomfortable." Really? I mean, she just had this idea that like one of us was going to get like arrested, and then like be like, "Well, we were drinking at this person's house," and then like the police were going to come like seize the house from us. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> Do you think that there should be a drinking age in general? Yes. Why? Anything stupid I've ever done in my life has been from alcohol. But it, don't you think that there's some merit to the idea that if there's not a drinking age, like people will normalize it at an earlier age? I think people will, but I think... It... Like if you could have a glass of wine when you're 13 years old or some shit like that, 
I don't know. I, I, I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess I guess the one thing that it would do would it it would definitely decrease the amount of like kids who go to college and start fucking binge drinking out of control for like four years because they've already been eased into that lifestyle of like drinking. Yeah, I feel like the drinking the like binge drinking culture is a product of the drinking age. But I also feel like it's definitely a, a false narrative that in Europe because the drinking age is like 16 or 18 that they're like we no one here is binge drinking no it's one like, even gets dude, drunk you guys get fucked up constantly <laughs> yeah like what are you talking about that's like such like a I feel like that's like an American idea of Europe that they're all like we only have one glass of wine yeah it's like the, no dude I know pe like I know people from Europe and they're full on alcoholics yeah there's like crazy <laughs> clubs yeah. all over the place yeah. a french guy dragging yeah. his third bottle of wine down the street yeah. like staggering yeah russians with vodka yeah like you think all like irish people don't binge drink yeah. the fuck are you talking it's, about yeah. british people at like a pub i've gone out i mean when i go out with column and we we went out one time with me and he had two other buddies and they're all from ireland like like two that they, they still live in ireland Oh, they're the devil. Probably. And we, dude, they drank more than I've ever seen a human being drink in just Guinness the whole time, like 30 Guinnesses each. Yeah. They started early and, and they're just, like sober. They got a head start. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think that like, and obviously I know Ireland also has the stereo, like the, their stereotypical, like, whoa, they drink a lot. But I think a lot of countries drink a lot. In South Africa, they said that, uh, during COVID they stopped sales of alcohol. And they said that it was like the best thing to happen for the country. I'm sure. Because there were so many hospitalizations and arrests that never happened because people like have such bad alcohol problems out there. Yeah. And there's the domestic things, self-harm, drinking yourself into oblivion. Yeah. That if they just prohibited it, like our brothers in Saudi Arabia... I heard Saudi Arabia might be it, dude. Saudi Arabia might there? be next up. Alcohol is completely prohibited. Yeah. But they have... But what do they all do? They all do fucking opium and shit? I don't think so. Everyone does. Every, they're all doing something. Everywhere they're doing something. There's not I think just one they have like country free where everyone's sober. I think in Saudi Arabia, they might all be sober. They have free healthcare, so what? They're getting oxies for free. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't... Dude, everyone's doing drugs There's no somewhere. way they have... Or they're all, or they're, or they're all like mounted to a fucking hookah 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a fucking breathing mask. I don't think it's Saudi Arabia. I think that they just love God and like the family unit. That's a drug. Yeah, God is. is a drug. It's the most powerful drug of best all. One, best one around. The body of Christ. There, I saw I saw a reel on Instagram yesterday of some girl like drinking in Florence, like dancing in the street with like a bottle of wine and all the comments were like talking about how it's like Americans ruining the city. And I was like, dude, they drink. Everyone drinks. You brought your fucking poison, yeah. your smallpox blanket of alcohol <laughs> yeah. to our country. Yeah. Now look at us. Yeah. The most drunk I've ever been was in Italy. Really? Yeah. Throwing up and shitting at the same time. You're, <laughs> that's when you were 15? I was probably 17. Yeah. Damn. Throwing up into the bidet and shitting, going explosive diarrhea in the toilet. <laughs> So, <laughs> so you have say that. what you want. Yeah, that was the the fucking dream. Yeah, and they don't give a shit. They will happily serve a borderline on the verge of death sixteen year old alcohol. When I was, they're in, not cutting people off. When I was in college, my dad asked me to go to Italy with him. He was like asking me to go like every summer. He had like work with some physicists out yeah. there in uh, they were building Palermo, the <laughs> in Sicily. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I used to go to like there was a dude in the in the movie Oppenheimer, this dude Nicholas Fermi or whatever. Yeah. I went to his like my dad just like took me to his lab when I was a kid. Like really? it's like a tourist yeah, destination yeah, yeah. or something like that. But I had like a hat from his lab. It That's was awesome. so fucking it would have played so hard. It was like a big like boxy nineties hat. Yeah, you gotta get that back. I need to fucking Do you find still this. Have it? I, I, I got to check when I go home or something. I need to talk to my dad about Oppenheimer because these were probably like all his heroes. They were probably his friends. I, I mean, I don't know yeah. if they... Maybe they made a movie about Oppenheimer. <laughs> about Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Our Bob? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our Bob? <laughs> Bob who made the Bob? But, uh, Adam Bob Bob? <laughs> Adam Bob <laughs> Bob? <laughs> but when I, whenever my dad was saying like, oh, let's go to... Come, come to Sicily with me. I was like, Nah. I want to. I, I would stay home in the summer. That's like such like a like a high school. We might have even talked about that on, on the yeah. show before because it's I don't like, want to go to fucking Italy, Dad. I'm not gonna fucking. I want to hang there. out with my friends. This is stupid yeah. as fuck. 
I was like finally old enough where he thought I, I was mature enough to enjoy it. And I was like, oh, you're sorely mistaken. Yeah, yeah. I'm nowhere near mature yeah. enough for this. Eventually, I did go out um, to Italy with him. And it was sweet. We went to... I don't even fucking remember, bro. We spent it sometime in Rome, but sometime in some other place. Parma. 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 Very nice. Where they make the cheese. They hate Americans there? No, bro. <laughs> I know you're acting a fool. No, I was. I went to a, a dinner of like all physicists and like banquet hall style. That's crazy. What do you guys talk about? I was. It was like one of my first times drinking in front of my dad. I got shit faced. Yeah, they like cut me off. Yeah, and they were like, it was like Italian nonas coming around, just eating, yeah. <laughs> just shoving food down my throat, <laughs> just with a tennis ball gun shooting meatballs into my mouth, yeah. just filling me the fuck up. I want to go to Europe. I uh. Yeah, I booked my. I'm going to Denver in September for pleasure. For pleasure, I'm going to. One of my buddies lives out there. And we're going most to- tings, <laughs> most tings per capita. Yeah. Did you hear Drake say that? No. <laughs> yeah. Side talk asked. Side talk asked Drake where they had the most tings per capita, and he said Denver. Yeah. That's hilarious. He said Denver, and he was like Scarborough, man, get unruly. <laughs> That's awesome. It was like the biggest density of tings. That's yeah. so Highest funny. density of tins. <laughs> most tings, tings per capita. Most tings per square foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Go. We're going to the woods, so I don't know if there'll be any tings out there. There will be, unless unless you want to call. A fucking good old fashioned brown trout of ting. A white tailed deer. Yeah. And we'll be getting some white tail out there. Yeah. Different type. But dude, the t- ticket was so cheap. To Denver? Because I just booked it in advance. Yeah, you don't have to do shit at the last minute. Comfort plus. Um, I would really like to go to I would really want to go to Europe with you. Yeah, that'd be fun as fuck. I was looking at this place called Grindelwald in Sweden. I'm very familiar. Are you? Very familiar with Grindelwald. I heard it's a place where time completely stops when mm-hmm. you're out there. It's like interstellar. Yeah, it slows down. It speeds up, actually. But yeah. stops right, I guess for people it on Earth. It's, it speeds well, up for people on Earth. It slows yeah, yeah, down yeah. for them. Right, 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 right. It's kind but, of going through an interstellar thing right now. Kind of fucking Working sick. through it. Just, kind of, just trying to work through it. Just One day at a bits. time. <laughs> um, how do you know about Grindelwald? Sweden? I don't. Never heard of it in my entire oh, really? life. Yeah. There's like a- Comedy uh, podcast, bro. Keep up. There's a Harry Potter. <laughs> that was the least funny thing you've ever said. <laughs> I've heard of the town you're talking about. Oh, really? Can we relate on that? Uh, but there's a Harry Potter wizard called Grindelwald, and yeah. I thought that that's what the fuck they're talking about. Um, but it's supposed to be this fucking beautiful mountain town in the middle of Sweden. I feel like we could do some hiking out there. Really just find God. Go in like the early fall. Maybe we go to Germany for Oktoberfest. Very fun. Does that sound fun? That'd be awesome, yeah. I don't know if we pay out of pocket and just do the content out there or... Barstool ain't paying for shit for us anymore. Barstool's going to make us pay our way into like... They started making us rent the studio to film the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to pay a hundred bucks an hour. Uh, They're they're just docking salaries left and right. Oh, yeah. It's fucking brutal. Red tape slashing through our salaries. I know. And they make us pay to come to the meetings that they put on our schedule. A lot of meetings. They're adding... Some good ass bureaucracy in here. I know. It's very, very corporate. As it should be. And us common men, we're just trying to stay common men. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to pay to play. You gotta have a strike. Don't let. Should we stage a walkout? Don't let Portnoy hear you say that, dude. I know. In the Oppenheimer, like most of the people at that time, not, maybe not most of them, but a lot of the intellectuals in the college circles that he was going to were communists. I hate communists. I could see I you having, at the time, I could see you have, getting really into communism. Oh, 100%. At the time, I could see you being- like, All it takes is one movie for me to fully form my opinion for the next three months. Yeah. You would have been, I, I think, a big, just grassroots communist, big local communist. Yeah. Going to the meetings with the acronyms. Being yeah. Like, we should all just do this together. This Dude, I watched, that when I watched Born time. on the Fourth of July, for the first half of the movie, I was like, America's the best country in the world. Uh, if you're a communist, you should die. And then by the end, I was like, the government's fucked. <laughs> Yeah. I changed my opinion from to the opposite sides of the spectrum twice during that movie. Yeah. Just based on whatever Tom Cruise was saying. That shit was happening to me during ah. Oppenheimer too. What? My foot fell asleep. Damn it, brother. You want me to wake it up? Ah, no, but it's one of the bad ones. <laughs> St- stand up a little bit. Hobble around. 
Let me slap that bitch around a little bit. There's no chance that this table is made of graphite, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what are the radiation no. levels in here? <laughs> I'm watching Chernobyl right now. It's fucking crazy, dude. It seems sick. It's awesome. Dude, it's, they were like, well, it's not awesome, but it's interesting. And the, it, well, they just make it. I watched maybe the first like three or four. Ep- Actually, no, I think I watched the whole thing. Yeah, I think it's only like six episodes. They, but they make it seem very gnarly. What's happening to the people? Stand up, or let me at no, least I'll slap fight, your I'll foot. I'll fight through this shit. That's not how Continue. it works. Just keep going. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, looks like pins and needles. Put your toe towards like your you knee. Read yeah, about. yeah, like that. Or stomp it out a couple times. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Just keep going. All righty, let's talk about Game Time, the exclusive ticket partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to game sports, concerts, and shows. Yo, I'm actually going to Tyler Childers this week. Tyler Childers this week, Roan will be there, I'm and he will be going. there with the Game Time app because they will be guaranteeing the lowest price. I'm finally going to Tyler Childers, and I got the tickets through Game Time. So easy to use. Where are you going? Where is it? It's at Radio City. <laughs> it's possible with the Game Time app, the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought Shit! you could never buy. <laughs> the purchase process takes just two taps and 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get them in seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app and go to the website. Enter your email and redeem code BOYDAD for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Shit! When I was a little boy, I'd see my dad get dead legs and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah. This, this is embarrassing to be around. It's the worst feeling. Charlie horse is bad. Hands are the worst. I feel like I wake up every single morning and for the first 30 minutes, I'm just like. Really? Oh, yeah. Every day. It's probably the graphite. It's probably the graphite. It's also because I sleep on my arm. And the mold. I, oh, put my, yeah. I put my arm like that and I sleep on it. And then I wake up in this hand and it's just like completely numb. That's You're begging for shoulder yeah. and like spine problems. Yeah. You're begging for the worst. But I really need to get one of those box pillows. Which ones? Cube pillows. Which ones are You don't those? ever get the Instagram ads for those things? Is it the ones that you get on the plane where you like suck your own dick? You, you like no, it's literally just like, like a, it's just a massive cube. It's like the cube from Transformers. You ever seen Transformers, have you? Uh, the first one. You don't know what the cube is, bro? I don't fucking know. I saw it so long How the ago. hell do you not know what the cube is? You either you got a big old ad. ad. Sounds like you just won a $250 gift card, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I've never seen the What, you put your head in that? <laughs> no. You put your hand in You put your head that's insane. That looks terrible. <laughs> that is not what I was talking about. That is nuts. But that's the people have those <laughs> on airplanes. Hands, you like lock your hands in. Yeah, that. That's crazy. That's for that's like an office class. job thing. Like they're gonna start. Planes. They're gonna start dishing those out in offices. Planes would be good. Yeah. But P- I tried one on the plane. They suck. Yeah, it looks insane. Yeah, I was kidding. I'm never actually gonna buy one of those things. The ads always just crack me up. I've bought many a type of like weird ass pillow. Yeah. Most recent one was like, there's like, it's like silk on the outside with like two like prongs. Yeah. And it like is in a U shape. It's shaped like a fucking sweet electric guitar or yeah. something like that. That's crazy. So dumb. What the fuck? That's how people, <laughs> is for people to sleep on their that. tummy? $200. All right, let's fucking buy them. I actually would rock one of those. More than <laughs> Imagine your house getting broken into and you got one of those things on. <laughs> yeah. He says more than your mattress. More than my mattress. I'm sleeping on a broken twin bed right now. That's how much is your mattress? I inherited it. Oh, mattress. you inherited your mattress? <laughs> Hand me down. That's fucking terrible. You as well just pick one up off the side of the street, <laughs> yeah. dude. Cheap furniture and cheap, like it's crazy how far you and like long you'll hold on to cheap furniture if you need to. Amazon everything, dude. Amazon couch, Amazon chairs, Amazon TV. Otherwise, it's the most expensive shit in the world. Yeah, I have an Amazon Basic toothbrush. It's probably the, it probably works fine. It's great. Probably some tiny hands out in fucking yeah. Malaysia made that for you. <laughs> yeah, I got Amazon silverware plates. I went and looked at tables yesterday. Like a kitchen table costs twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> Liter- no, literally. Yeah, that's dude, like a at, at an outlet. That's because you go to real places. You no, I went to an go, outlet it's store. It's got to be Amazon. Everything. That's dude. what I'm saying. You have to go you to can Amazon. Get a normal table for like three hundred bucks. And that's what I went to the outlet stores. I went to Industry City where like all the outlets are. It was like Francis told me to go here. It's like 
kitchen concepts or some shit like that. Yeah. It was the most expensive, most ridiculous. It's like a bar stool is like twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah, dude, that's you're going to the wrong places. Like that table, this table right here. I if me and you both tried to find this table, the one that I would get would be thirty dollars. The one that you would get would be like like a dude in fucking Alaska, like chopped down a tree and chiseled it down. Or they just like lied about it. They yeah. just like resanded one yeah. that they picked up off of the street corner. Yeah, and it would be like twenty thousand dollars. It's not me that likes it. It's women. No, you like it. No, I don't. You love it. No, you, yeah. you fucking like it, dude. There's going to be no going back once you get money. You're going to get money and you're going to you're gonna completely... There, there'll be no like going back to low maintenance sass. And that's just coming fast. It's not. Yes, it is. It's not coming fast at all. I will say I have upgraded to Comfort Plus. That's that's my new thing. And you ain't going backwards on that. Planet. I go back. I go back. I mean, I was in thirty. I was in the thirty eights all in Atlanta. But Comfort Plus, dude, I'm, I'm just my legs are too long to be in those tiny ass seats. Yeah, yeah. I feel you, bro. You 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 deserve it. And I got to be in the aisle, but I'm in the window both ways in Denver, <sighs> dude. The flights to Denver are there's there, almost all of them were sold out, and it's so far away. I know. Is there like a convention or some shit happening in Denver? Like a in September? In September? I have no fucking Maybe idea. Maybe it's just prime time fishing or the Broncos. Broncos, yo, Broncos Nation, let's ride. <laughs> Broncos country. What do they say? Let's ride. What is it? What do they say? Broncos country. I think that's what Russell yeah. Wilson just said in that one stupid fucking video. The video's awesome. The Broncos coach has been talking a ton of shit, though. He's, I've heard. He's been talking shit on the Jets. I've heard. On our Jets. And Aaron Rodgers said, keep my coach's name out of your mouth. <laughs> People getting defensive about their coach is so, so funny. funny. Especially when you've been, you've been, you haven't even played a game on the team yet. That's how I feel when people talk shit about Barstool Comedy. Oh, I'm yeah. like, keep my GM's name out of yeah. your fucking mouth. No one talks shit on my GM. You don't even know. The Barstool Comedy has no ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> we will never fail. No, no one fucking talks shit about my GM. You don't talk shit about my GM. I'm in the comments. <laughs> Keep my GM's name out of your <laughs> fucking mouth. It's my GM. That's my quarterback. It's so funny. What was the Saquon? Uh, what was with the Saquon deal? I don't know, but I drafted Explain. him in my fantasy draft. Me too. You want to get in a fantasy football league together? I'm already in my own. With who? Just by myself. Whatever. I'm going to be in like six leagues, so I'll, I'll get in another one with you. No, I'm just playing by my... I have two teams, and I'm competing against them. I was fantasizing yesterday about having Stephen Che and me just have all the teams in a league. Every yeah. week, me and Stephen Che are playing against each other. That would be awesome. That is the dream. Yeah. You already drafted? I did one of them just because I couldn't fucking... I couldn't wait. You couldn't wait any longer. I joined a like a public Straight league. jittery. <laughs> I joined a public joined league a on public Yahoo. public league. <laughs> I did that twice last year. I just wanted to get a draft in. <laughs> I might get. A, I'm going to do a mock draft today, probably. I did a mock draft before. I like my mock way better than I like my yeah. my public league. Yeah, but I got like all the. That's rookies. usually how it goes. My mock is always better. My mock ruled. Yeah, I was a fucking genius with the mock, but you know, I got Saquon, Devontae Adams, all the. Rookies. I know how hard he's going to be working with only 11 million dollars this year. Yeah, but he's he's for that next contract that next year. But he could just coast this year. He's going to get that hundred mil next year. Regardless. He's never getting a there's no running back is never going to get a hundred million dollars again. You don't hear Yego fucking shaking his head at you. Yego, you don't know ball. Don't try and come in here <laughs> acting like you know ball. He's a Giants fan, bro. Yeah, dude. But people they're always doubting their own team. I mean, I would doubt the Giants too. They suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, no. No, 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 no. The Giants are the future of maybe like the XFL or whatever that other league is. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, sneakily, the Saints could have a good year this year. Saints are looking nice. Saints are looking good. Well, they good. just have a weak ass schedule. I put 20K on the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. I saw that. Yeah. And people are like, Sass doesn't have money. Uh, he yeah, put 20K at 30 to 1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sass stands to win $600,000. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even fucking sweat it. Yeah, it's no fucking big deal. Whatever. Who gives a fuck anyway? I wonder what the Patriots odds really are. I don't know. Probably long as hell. I'm usually, I'm more of, I like to wait until preseason is like a little bit like halfway through until I start putting down my futures. Probably long as fucking Sass's legs and fucking Comfort Plus. I know. I also, I got the good Comfort Plus, the one that's up, that's up front. Cause that's, that's the real Comfort Plus. What do you mean? Comfort Plus up front, dude. That's when you got the fucking wall in front of you. So yeah, you're, you're, I don't you're, like that wall. Oh, I love the wall because I don't. Really? I don't watch TV on planes. Oh, I watch TV. I, I need just to listen watch. to music. You do? Yeah. What the hell? The window and think. Well, I'm always on edge, especially if I'm in the exit row. You got to be focused. <laughs> you got to be planning for the worst at all times. Wake up! Yeah. Da -da -da -da! 
gonna put yeah. us in the makeup. That's Getting me another cup of Joe over here. Getting a little sleepy, <laughs> and we're coming up on some turbulence. Got to be prepared for the worst at all times. Yeah, I like to get up in the middle of the flight and go, "Okay, guys, if you weren't listening before, your seat cushion does double down as a life vest." <laughs> you refresh yeah. people. On the- <laughs> when the oxygen masks drop, please put yours on first, and then get the little ones next. The seatbelt works like this. Safety is our priority. I get real focused. I know you do. I fucking know you do. Dude, I was supposed to go out to California at the end of this week. I was excited Cali. for it. I was about to rack up miles, and now my fucking trips are getting compounded. Oh, it's God pissing damn. me off, dude. I need to schedule a bunch of travel. That's why I'm trying to go to Grindelwald, Sweden. Dude, if you, you think you're hitting diamond, I got bad news for you. You'd I, be lucky if you get I bet silver. I, do. I, bet I, I bet I hit it. <laughs> You'd be lucky if you get silver next year. <laughs> bet I hit it. No, not even a chance. I bet I do. I'm pretty much already at silver. Locked in. I need Whatever my there. bennies. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get diamond. I need my. You need like a hundred thousand more miles till you get diamond. Fuck off, dude. And we are. I mean, we're coming up close on that deadline. No, we're not. Yeah. What do we got? F- five more months. Shut the fuck up. I would be nervous. August, September, October, November, December. Fuck. Five more months. Fuck. And I already. Oh man. Whatever. This is. It's always on the back of my mind. It's always totally. just floating right there in my mind. Dude, I had people, I had a guy come and fucking hang up my uh, my TVs. And I was just like tweeting some casual jokes about it. Yeah, I saw that it was funny. People, but now people were like, you're not hanging your own TVs? Yeah, no one hangs their own TVs. Dude, how am I about to hang a 75-inch <laughs> TV? <laughs> I don't even hang up my TVs. I just lean them against the wall. Yeah, what people Who are the like? Fuck is mounting their own TVs. I'm, I'm just sure so tired of fucking tw- the any response I get on Twitter to like the most obvious joke. Oh yeah, it's like I try to tip these guys in in like uh, Instagram captions or something like that. People are like, "You're the worst type of human yeah, being." Yeah, it's just because I think a lot of shit is making its way into the algorithm of people that don't follow you and don't know that you're joking. A lot of people were following me. It's like people are just the smoothest, dumbest brains. I had to pay this much for a fucking ice cream. Like, well, why don't you get the fuck out of the country then? Yeah. yeah. Like, what the it's fuck is happening? It's a very hostile happening? time to be an American. What the fuck is happening right now? We're on the verge of another civil war, strictly from Twitter. <laughs> who against who, though? I think it's going to be, a, I, I think it's going to be multiple different groups. The next civil war will be fought with rocks, man. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to fight World War Three, but I'd World War IV is going to be along. with rocks. <laughs> Your Beretta? Yeah. Your girl gun? Beretta's not a girl gun. Berettas are like this big. Berettas is what the United States military used to use, brother. Berettas are literally, they were marketed for women. No, they were not. 100% they, they were. were marketed for for soldiers. No. Yeah. For women soldiers. The Beretta? Yeah, there's a red. Ew, why Beretta. is it red? That's not what That's the a first Louboutin Beretta looks Beretta. like. That's insane. That's a Christian Louboutin, bro. That is not what a Beretta looks like. Berettas are literally. You couldn't even buy that red Beretta if you wanted to. It looks like it. Yeah, the Beretta by by the big boots. What do the what does the military use now for pistols? Glocks? Desert Eagles. They do not use Desert Eagles. <laughs> but that's not a that's not a pistol. <laughs> the US military does not use Desert Eagles. Why not? Because that's not a, that's like a fucking hand cannon, dude. No one's using that shit. A desert eagle? Use that in Call of Duty strictly. <laughs> Maybe I'm misunderstanding what a desert eagle is. You're talking like a guy who's never been in, in close combat. Close quarters combat. You gotta be you gotta be ready to like no kick. Why would it be called a desert eagle? Desert eagle is like <laughs> that that's a desert oh, I guess eagle. It is a handy. Yeah, hand cannon, bro. I'm more of a five hundred Magnum guy. Revolver. Is Desert Eagle better than Glock? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a Desert Eagle would Desert blow your Eagle head off. Desert Eagle is very like, heavy, but it can fire much more p- powerful rounds. Yeah, dude, that's not accuracy. I'm talking about killing a human being. You're not killing a fucking bear. Right, what's the difference? Oh, man, I don't have time for this bullshit right now. You don't fucking know, I don't got time for this With bullshit. With your little girl guns, Bro, dude. Desert Eagle is like the go-to sidearm in Call of Duty. Everyone's rocking a Desert Eagle. You would not be rocking a Desert Eagle in, in close quarters combat. And that's a promise. <laughs> what kind of close quarters combat? Military? Military. Or in the streets? If you're getting pulled up on by like six terrorists, you want to have, I mean, usually me, I would go M16 primary. Secondary, I would probably go with a 
10 millimeter Glock or Beretta, I guess, if they're if that's what they're still supplying. <laughs> you got to be thinking about jams. You got to be thinking about reload time. What's the fastest reload? For you? No, for you. Or for me. For a quick reload. For a trained for a trained professional. For a trained pro. Yeah, not my dumb ass. Block nine, easy. Really? Yeah. Mook, how fast was I reloading those things? He was too fast. Too fast. Yeah. <laughs> Where I would that? have Mook reload magazines for me. I'd go, Mook! <laughs> Magazine! I needed more mags. <laughs> I got a jam. Have you seen the TikTok videos of the dudes like at war from like the Iraqi war or whatever, like clearing rooftops and shit like that? No. Um, I used to see the ones when I had TikTok of the Ukraine war. Yeah. Yeah. The Iraqi war, like some of the dudes that are just like up on roofs, like clearing roofs, like their uniforms are baggy on them. They like don't bend at the waist. Like they were clearly just like thrown into the war. Oh, yeah. Like these are just like they, they're they not like tactically moving through like you expect. Like I've seen dudes in movies move more like tactical than these like random ass dudes moving around on roofs. But that's how we were giving it up. Yeah. Must have been a fucking sweet time. Yeah. Also, they say I forget where I, someone they were saying somewhere that like the, the problem with like uh, like the terrorists or I guess I don't know if terrorism is as big as it was. Terrorism's dead, bro. That's yeah. just old anyway. It's old news. But I think it was like with Al Qaeda. It was those guys, they were fighting because they, they, they had so much passion. They, they believed so much in what they were doing. And also, the more that they would get killed, the more people would enroll. That's why after 9-11, you think you would have signed up after 9-11? Hell no. If you were of age? No. You wouldn't have been paid. You wouldn't have been like galvanized by the, the There's country. podcasts to be recorded, brother. <laughs> this was before podcasts. This is 20. This is 2001. Imagine that you were like radio 18 or like like 20 years old in, in 2001. No, you wouldn't have enlisted. No. Why? Because I don't want to go to the fucking war. But you don't want to defend your country. You weren't even defending our country. We were defending a country that had nothing to do with fucking 9-11 to steal their oil. You wouldn't have wanted Do some to, research, bro. You wouldn't have wanted to kill bin Laden. No, <laughs> they need, they weren't even trying to kill Bin Laden in the beginning. They're trying to kill Saddam Hussein. <laughs> I know. So fucked up. <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna make this about Saddam." Like, yeah, we gotta kill the Afghani's and Bin Laden, dude. In the and looming just a tower, senator in the background, yeah, like, and San Hussein, yeah, dude. In the looming tower, they were like, they like nine eleven happens, and they're pretty much like, yeah, like clearly this is. So Osama bin Laden, and they were like, mm, they're like, no, no, we want to make this about Saddam Hussein. Like that's like they, they straight up said that. And I mean, I'm sure it was different in real life, but in the show they said that. They yeah, I feel like they can just go to they go to war with whoever they want to. Yeah, they'll just be like, yeah, there's actually aliens. Yeah. We're also going to war with Saddam Hussein. Yeah. That's why I wonder who why why they announced the aliens last week. I oh. wonder what they're covering up. Something bad. Yeah, something crazy is about to happen. That fucking psyop that they're hitting us with. Yeah, I don't know. The aliens thing was interesting. I don't. I didn't listen to it. Did you? I saw clips of it, and I was over him so so fast. I just need. I need the hard proof of like you're gonna be like. If you're gonna be saying there's aliens, give us like one picture of an alien, right? Just being like, know what to look for. And the guy was even like, I can't say. I can't even tell you how crazy it was. <laughs> the shit that me and my wife saw. It sounds like you were at like hedonism too. <laughs> Got blacked out on rum on like a hot day, and like stumbled out of your like swingers party and like saw like the headlights of a car or some yeah. shit like that like the shit that i saw fucking it was violent all right so, then take a picture of it so only one dude saw it they're saying that multiple people i are genuinely testifying. don't know anything about it i think I don't multiple people testified is. and uh with testimony from like a lot of military guys so they said that they're that the ufos are real and they said that aliens are real yeah and they confirmed that yeah. That's crazy. And that only 5% of them are reported or... Yeah, I know. That's so funny. Some stupid shit like that. I saw that. that part. How do they even know that? I don't know. How do they know what's not being reported? It's probably because <laughs> they're not aliens. <laughs> yeah. They're Mexican dudes. Yeah. Fucking A, man. I don't know. It's interesting. I would like to... I'd like to see an alien for sure. Like maybe if we get some... Put them in a zoo or something. Yeah. That would be fucking crazy. I hope they're furry. That'll exist. Aliens in zoos? Yeah. It's way more likely that they put us in zoos. You think? If they can get here. But why? I, 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 it's all of the, all, the, all the idea that we have of aliens is all fiction. Totally. 
Why would they like? We don't know if they're going to come here and be like, we're going to destroy the entire planet. Like, but, why would they want to do that? Because that's what we've done. So they're probably like, let them destroy it. I think that. Yeah, well, but if if like, uh, I doubt they need the same resources as us. I feel like any cell wants to like dominate, stay alive as possible, and eliminate potential predators on Earth. Any cell on Earth. Any what if cell just, period. Like, nice as hell. <laughs> well, what makes you think that they'd be like uh, nice? I don't know. You hope that they would. Maybe they're made of different cells than than everything on Earth is. But like they still would want to stay alive. Like they still have shown that if they're like coming here, they've shown the instinct to stay alive. Maybe they don't fear God. <laughs> you ever think about that? Maybe bro? they need to sit down and go to Hillsong. Yeah. Go to Justin Bieber's church. Fuck a man who a man who does not fear Allah will never truly die. Holy shit! Isn't that a quote? Right? Didn't I say that a couple episodes ago? <laughs> kind of remember. I've kind of moved on from my. From my Arabic phase, <laughs> way more into space. Shit a man now. who fears God will never die. Sass Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Allah. Not, not to say the prophet. Allah. Right? Allah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, uh, Muhammad. I guess the prophet. Allah is the God. So I guess they all said it. The prophet Muhammad. Can we say it? Can we say his name? The prophet Muhammad. Yeah, I guess we could say his name. Why would we not be able to? My door guy, my old building was named Muhammad. When we when we told him that he we were leaving, he cried. Really? Yeah. He loves us so much. That sucks. He's like, are, do you, are you starting a business? Can I come work for you? Really? Yeah. Damn. I was like, damn, sorry I don't have a business like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I got no one. Really? I got no one in my apartment that I'm attached to. Yeah, you could just leave. I no could just leave. Even no one would have any idea. Just my my neighbors below me smoke weed and it comes up into my apartment and it pisses me off. He comes into your apartment? It just did alts. It goes up. Oh, the weed does? Yeah. And they've been, they're like, whoever it is is like a musician and they've been singing the same song every single day for probably the months now. What, how's it go? I don't know. You think they're trying to write something? It's not new? even like a song. It's like a tune. Maybe they're writing something. I don't know. They're pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of music? But I still stomp real loud. <laughs> you stomp to the beat? No, I stomp. Like, shut the fuck up. There's a fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't stomp. Play, your, play a trumpet at them? Yeah. Leaning into the ground. Yeah. I did that in that movie Tar. Tar. About that woman uh, director. It's actually a fire movie. Have I seen that? It was nominated for an Oscar last year. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. Have I? It sounds very familiar. It's about a predatory lesbian. Mm. A lesbian that always fucks the women underneath her. Mm. It's like Harvey Weinstein, but for Subaru owners. Yeah. That type of vibe. <laughs> I love a good Subaru, bro. You know me, Subaru Impreza, dream car. I know, and that's what makes you think that you do well in the in the community, the lesbian community. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would roll with a pack of lesbians. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to add a wheelchair guy. Yeah, you're trying to add a wheelchair. I'm trying to add a lesbian. That would make our crew so complete. We would be a wild crew. Yeah. Two straight white dudes, a lesbian, and a wheelchair guy. Uh, and I need like short haired lesbian, yeah. flannel shirt yeah. lesbian. Someone who's looking to get like in the mud for us. Like a lesbian that's going to hit like Anyone. 700 in the softball yeah. league. Yeah, yeah. Just like fucking, <laughs> like yeah. that's like a vacuum at third yeah. base. Yeah. Just like getting dirty. And fucking, 100%. Like that that dips. Yeah. I need a lesbian that's like spitting. <laughs> yeah. Fucking like. We need to, we should put out an application. <laughs> like we're looking for a lesbian who is willing to get in the mud. Someone who's looking to crack skulls, like they're 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 fine with cracking skulls, and we'll bail them out every time. And then like uh, we'll put up the bond. And uh, Greer said that he has a wheelchair guy for me. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll have to do like a screening, of course. Yeah, uh, so and I his profile looked good, except for he was he was lifting weights in the one thing, and he was using a Smith machine. And I was yeah, like, we don't need a jacked weird. wheelchair guy. We need a very no. Well, he was using a Smith machine. Guy. I was like, bro, hit a free weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Smith machine. Huh? Do we have an intern that's in a wheelchair? Like permanently or? Yeah, that's Greer's guy. That's Greer's guy. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. He was using the Smith machine. His his golf shot looked great, but I mean, like, come on, bro, Smith machine? <laughs> and we're also going to need some sort of proof that it's a permanent thing. Oh. I don't want a guy who, like, broke his leg. <laughs> a Francis wheelchair yeah. incident. <laughs> I just yeah. got diagnosed with wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I could show you a picture of him. <sighs> he is, but he, he looks like he, and uh, Greer said he texts him every morning with, like positivity, <laughs> yeah. Which is what I'm looking for out of my wheelchair guy. Oh, he's taking cold showers. <laughs> he's about to do an Alcatraz swim. He seems a little too motivated for our crew. 
40 degree water. He's getting lowered in. You'd be the most active out of anybody in the crew. <laughs> Damn. That's it. Damn. What the? Here, I got to show, show him uh, lifting weights. Yeah, bro. Did you see the Smith machine, though? I mean, good form. He's repping it, too, which makes you think he could go up and yeah, rate. That's like a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah. oh, fuck. How yeah. much weight was that? It's uh, I think he's uh, flat benching 450. Holy shit. Wait, how many 45s were on that? Looks like two. How much is two forty fives? Ninety. So So ninety on each side, and so and on two forty five, two twenty five, and then there was twenty five, twenty five, yeah. Two twenty five, two seventy five. So yeah, yeah, he was flat, but on the Smith, Smith, so it's like, (laughs) but two seventy five on the Smith, and he was repping that out. (laughs) Yeah, he was. He's a beast. All right, so that's what I mean. I feel like he would be good. Well, if we get him in the crew, we may we could get go for a more of a frail lesbian for sure. No, because <laughs> he's gonna he's looking like he's definitely get willing to get in the mud. No, frail lesbians have the wrong sensibilities. No. I want someone that can like eat a burger within one minute. Yeah, like someone that's like drinks a lot of milk. Yeah, chugs milk, belches, slaps yeah. you on the back, like makes fun of you for like reading hates the Bud Light. Even though she's gay. <laughs> yeah. She hates it. That shit. She's not yeah. like other lesbians. Yeah. Is kind of what I want. Not, I want your, not your typical lesbian. Like someone with like 90s sideburns like Vince Vaughn yeah, or some shit like definitely. that. Definitely. Like fucking just long, nasty ones. I feel like that's like if girls can have a gay best friend, where is the market for these lesbians? Yeah. Wanting to hang out with bros like us. Do you think they want to? Uh, No. It's hard out here for a straight straight white male. It's never been harder. That might be true. Is that true? <laughs> Is that true? I'm trying to think of a harder time in history for a straight white male. It's the hardest it's ever been for me, that's for sure. And you're as straight and as white as they come. Fucking Huntsville and Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Please buy know, tickets for my boy. People don't know Philly. what I've been going through. Please get tickets in Philly. Squeeze out of the yak. Squeeze out of the yak. Not you couldn't make it to drag brunch. Can't go to drag brunch. In Huntsville. They definitely like blew up the building when they got everyone inside that drag brunch. Yeah, in no, they were like, dude, they were like, this, they were like, it sells out Locked every single week. People travel for that. Yeah. Hours. Yeah. What it's like a hell? huge thing. They drag their ass into the city. And like every comedy club is doing drag brunches now. It's huge. Philly Helium does them, right? Yeah, it plays. I mean, I think it's just like a fun ass. It time. is fun. I used to. I, I went to drag shit on like South Beach or whatever, like you a used drag to go? brunch on South Bay. On Did South you perform? Beach perform? Yeah. Nah, I didn't perform. I don't want to steal King valor the drag. like that. <laughs> Kotd. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to go with like women. Women love it. And anything that Sounds women like love, dudes love it. Yeah. Well, the dudes love it, love it, but the the women they just want to go like woo. And like wear a pink cowboy hat. Yeah. All the girls who went to the Barbie movie dressed up were just wearing their outfits from Drag Brunch. Yeah, everyone's been walking around in pink. Yeah. I saw a girl go in with a pink beretta. Really? Shoot up the theater. Yeah. Pink beretta? She was like a cute, a cute uh, mass shooter. That was like in reality, that movie where she has the pink AR-15. I don't think I saw it, bro. You've seen it. You actually told me about it. Reality? Oh, Remember reality winner. Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any guns? I have a pink AR-15. That movie was actually. I thought that movie was good. You said you didn't like it. I don't. I don't like. I didn't like how sequential it was. Like the fact that they did a direct transcript made it feel like a play, and I fucking hate plays. Getting all sorts of text messages right now that I don't. My, my agent just texted me and said, "Do you play video games?" <laughs> I don't even know what that could possibly be about. But how does he know so little about you? He no, I, I, I mean, he's probably minutes. joking, but I don't know what it could be about. He's not joking. No, he jokes. We laugh. We kid. It was, so what's the punchline of that joke? I don't know. I'm sure it's going to go somewhere. He's probably <laughs> probably working on it right now. It's about crafting it. You're in the new Madden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sass. We 82 booked. rating? This is bullshit. We just booked Madden. <laughs> You're on the bills. No, oh, Call of Duty. That would be my dream come true. They put me in the campaign like Kevin Give you Spacey. A skin. I got the sass skin. You know, have you ever seen Kevin Spacey in the Call of Duty? No. Yeah. There's a there's a little boys school up up here. No. What does he say? Yeah. 
No, uh huh. He says there's a there's a boys' school up up the way here. And do you get to That's kill like him? That's like the only part of the movie that he's in. Do you get to kill him? Kevin Spacey? Yeah. No, he's an ally. Why the hell is he talking about little boy schools? Wasn't he like? Li- yeah, he's a little boy molester. What Can the you fuck? Look up, look up the little bo- look up the boys' school. I don't think he says little boys. I think it's just there's a boys' school. <laughs> there's a boys' school up the way here. Ask them how they peel their bananas. Ask them how they peel their bananas. <laughs> I don't even know what that could mean. I just said it. That's what uh, said he, it. that's what he said to Marty Mush. He said it to Marty Mush. He asked Marty Mush how he peels his banana at like the crafty table when they were working on a show together. Marty Mush and Kevin Spacey were working on a show together. And yeah, Mush was an extra. Yeah, Mush was an extra at like the crafty table, and Kevin Spacey came up to him and asked him how he peeled his bananas. <laughs> what the fuck? I know exactly. And you're celebrating this man just because he was in your precious video game. I'm not celebrating him. I'm saying it's funny that he was in it saying that because then it turned out that he was a child molester. Tell your agent that, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I will. No, I don't really fuck with the video game industry. Ever since Kevin Spacey. Ever since Kevin Spacey was fucking molesting Marty Mush. I'm going to find the clip. Kevin Spacey. Boys school. Call of duty. Mook with the Alexander Charles sweatshirt. Light work. Yeah, that's the dog. Oh shit, he's in a lot of it. He's got twenty five minutes. Trailer. Yeah, that sucks. Maybe this is maybe this was a meme. Maybe I got maybe I got duped here. There was a boys' school up the road. I want you to suck off these boys' bananas. <laughs> you would have did it too. You'll do anything they say in a campaign of a video game. Hundred percent. Your next mission is to find this all boys. Oh, yeah, it is this. There's a great junior high just up the road here. <laughs> <laughs> that might be fake, though. I hope so. <laughs> that was his, like, one clause is he can write his lines. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see, let's see if he campaign. says it. Let's right. see if he actually says it. Just it's just a video of uh, a hippopotamus farting. I don't know why that's in the beginning of the video. So the whole ten, first 10 seconds is just a hippopotamus farting. And then it and then it goes to Kevin Spacey. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Oh, okay. Looks like we got duped again. Can't fucking win these days, can you? It's never been harder to be a straight white male. I know, it's bullshit. Even, even the, the predators get more respect than us. I know. Even the predators don't wind up in jail. It's fucked. It's bullshit, This whole dude. country's fucked. Fucked. <laughs> ice cream for fourteen dollars. I don't know what people expected me to do about the fourteen dollar ice cream, bro. You're living in a luxury life, and you're surprised by the price. I'm allowed to bitch about you it. You gotta bro. fucking reevaluate. I can't bitch about it. Tw- tables are twelve thousand dollars. Not to the average. Not to the cu- guys. I know not all of us are common men here. I'm talking to the listener right now. We still got one common man on the show, and in bar stool. Twelve thousand dollars for a table is not normal, brother. Fifteen dollars for an ice cream cone is not normal. I went up to get the ice cream. I was in a pinch. You're living, in, you're living in an apartment. You're living in an apartment complex with two with two apartments in it. That's when you got half. The, you have half the building. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's four apartments. Are <laughs> you got your own floor? Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's that's not common, man. I don't have my own floor. That's the fuck are you talking man. about? <laughs> I went up to the ice cream truck and the prices weren't listed. <laughs> the guy in front of me got his milkshake and they were How like, How much was that? $300? It was $15. And I laughed at him too. I was like, You hear this guy? This guy got charged $15. Like, that could never happen to me. He was a good looking ice cream cone. It was big. No, it wasn't. It was fucking tiny. They should have fucking stacked cone. that shit sky high. And the guy like laughed at us as we like walked away paying for it. $15 for an ice cream cone. Dude, like a, a, a gallon of ice cream costs like eight bucks. And this is soft serve ice cream. Yeah. Like you could buy an ice cream truck for $15. <laughs> $15. That's like a sprinkle of powder and like a fucking a sprinkle of, of like condensed milk. Yeah. And then a gallon of water. And that's all it took to make that ice cream. Fifteen dollars. I walked by an ice cream truck the other day. I don't think any truck on earth gives off as much exhaust as an ice cream truck. Dude. I know because <laughs> it has like there's a whole fucking restaurant in there, and yeah. they got to keep everything cold and keep the AC on. God forbid they're making milkshakes inside of there. They have a whole milkshake machine, two swirly soft serve machines. Shit is fucked. Have you ever uh, walked by like the bar mitzvah tank? 
Yeah, I don't even know what that could possibly be. It's it's literally like this big ass truck. It's called. That's the, what Hitler called the gas chamber. <laughs> the bar <laughs> mitzvah tank. Yeah, no, there's jokes to be had. It's a big fucking like truck, blaring like bar mitzvah music. It's called the mitzvah tank. It's at, oh, it's like one of those like Nashville. Yeah, something like that. Party it's like trucks. A, it's like a party bus for a bar mitzvah. It's right outside um the art, like Washington down there. Damn. Washington Square Park, yeah, yeah, yeah. people go crazy for bar mitzvahs. It's crazy. You should get a bar mitzvah tank. Do an episode from one. I would. Yeah. Well, actually, it's you're popular. gonna have to get us in there. Yeah, I know. I feel like you. Uh, well, how, well, what was your bar mitzvah like? <laughs> That's a serious question. I didn't have a bar mitzvah. Why? Because I'm not like Jewish, dude. You're half Jewish. I'm half Jewish because my dad's Jewish. Okay, but so you couldn't have a bar mitzvah? No, I was raised Catholic. But you also are Jewish. I mean, you know this. Ethnically, I am part Jewish. Yes. Religiously. Religiously. But I praise one God. <laughs> Allah. Allah. <laughs> Allah Akbar. No, but, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, God no, is no, good. No, no, God's no. not good? I know how you're saying it, though. You're saying it in a way that just disrespects my no, culture. No, I'm not. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm saying it as, and I get, I now get why they say in a tense situation why you want to say God is good because if you get thrown into heaven you want the last thing that you're saying to be, have been like praising God mine would be like da. that's all I know <laughs> Duda. yeah that's all I know in Arabic what the fuck is da? it's, it's the, a Kylie Minogue song the first thing that you learn on Duolingo Duda. 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 I know that's how it goes um, alright come see Sass Come see Sass in fucking uh, in Pennsylvania. Philly. You know Philly I love it. Up. Philly, you know I fucking love you. Oh, you gotta love it. It's gonna be like Gilly Fest all over God, again. I'm gonna be posting a bunch of like Meek Mill on my stories this week. <laughs> yeah. New shit. Damn, this new shit's crazy. Dreams and nightmares. Did you see him come this out shit, at Gilly this Fest? This shit new? Yeah, I did. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Did you see Gilly... Like he, Gilly was like zoning out on stage and Meek smacked him and like no, scared I didn't the see fuck that. out of him. No. So many people came out at Gilly Fest. Yeah, it was Sexy packed. Red. Yeah, it was huge. The baby. G Herbo. The baby. The baby looks like he's bulking right now. Yeah. Because he's still like muscular. Yeah. Once he cuts, dude, he's going to be shredded. I know. Well, he's probably waiting until next summer for, he's probably doing a dirty bulk for you 18 You think he's doing months. a full, yeah, that's a good move. 18 months of a dirty 18 bulk. 18 months, dirty bulk. And just getting it out of the system. Yeah, he said, what did he say? He's like, like, I don't care if you guys have AIDS, but just like, do that shit in the parking lot. Something <laughs> weird like that. Don't bring that into the show. And then Elton John spoke out against him. <laughs> did he? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's gotta hurt. Elton John coming at if you. If Elton John comes at you, he's like the best musician ever. Behind the baby. Behind the baby, yeah, that's true. I don't know how to dance, but lean. Elton John is so good. He is really good. When we when we were doing that sporkle, dude, Elton John's like top five highest selling artists of all time, I think. For album sales yeah. or lives? Live? Album sales. He crushes it live too. Yeah. He was the original gay man. Live. Yeah. <laughs> Original closeted gay man too, Rocket Man, not the man they think I am. Or I'm is not, that what he's talking about? He says I'm not the or I'm not the man they think I am at all. I'm a Rocket Man. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a pussy guy. I'm more of yeah, a Rocket guy. I like cock. I like something shaped exactly like a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like living on Mars. He's living in a different world because he's got to hide who he is. Same thing with Frank Ocean. When he's Mars like, is not the kind of place to raise a kid. <laughs> in fact, it's cold as hell. Well, he, the, and he's talking about gay marriage. I don't know what he's talking about on that part, to be honest. I just, I, had, I think it's about being gay, hell. right? It's about being a closeted gay man. I think same thing with Frank Ocean. He's like, I got a fighter jet. I don't get to fly and no one lying. I think that's about being famous yeah. and not being able to use your fame to fuck dudes. Yeah. Which, <laughs> that's, the, that's the nightmare. That is the nightmare. Being famous as fuck and not getting to fuck all the dudes you want. I know. It's like every sad song written by a dude. Not every sad song, but there's a bunch talking about another dude. And people like blaring it like, oh, they're, they're having gay sex. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Like DHL, dude, by Frank Ocean. That song yeah. was so good. And I'd be walking around town being like, <laughs> what does he say? He's like, boy, toy, ride me like a Uber. <laughs> like and I'm like, kid. I'm walking around town just like bumping that in my headphones. Be like, this shit is so good. It's like my guy, pretty like a girl. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. My guy, pretty like a girl. Yeah, Frank Ocean's good. He's awesome, but once he came out John as Elton bisexual, John. I like I I made it 
uh, in my head, I was like, every lyric is about dick. And it is. He's like, I'm biking, I'm biking. Yeah. I mean, if I you like, listen oh, to that, Oh, yeah, yeah. He's riding a bike. <laughs> yeah. I know, you know how you act when you ride a yeah. bike? Yeah. That's just him getting plowed from behind. It is. That's what I think a lot of the lyrics are about. Gotta, be, gotta all be right. Yeah. I'm biking, I'm biking. Yeah. So what does, it, what does pink mean? <laughs> what do you mean? She's a lesbian. Huh? I said pink's a lesbian. I think that plays. I don't know. Damn. All right. All right. See you guys next week.